Bum 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 bum. Hello, everybody. It's a wonderful Sunday morning, and that can only mean one thing. Well, actually, it could probably mean several things, but one of the many things it means is that it's time for coffee with Scott Adams. Now, I'm from upstate New York, and we call it coffee. You might call it coffee or something like that that just sounds wrong. But whatever you call it, whatever beverage you have, whatever kind of mug, vessel, cup, or container you can find, fill it with your favorite liquid, bring it to your lips, and enjoy the simultaneous sip. Welcome to the first time simultaneous sipper I just saw in the comments. And get ready for a long relationship with this periscope. All right. Um, Has the whole world gone crazy? Probably. Let's talk about the story. I'm, I'm gonna say that this following story, there are probably parts of it we don't know, parts of it we don't understand. But did you see the, the story that uh, Nellie Orr, wife of Bruce Orr, of, who was number four in the FBI, and Nellie Orr was part of, uh, part of the, um, the, 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 the GPS thing, what do you call that? Uh, she was part of what GPS? I forget what it's called. But anyway, she had Russian connections and she was considered to be a suspicious character in the government. Uh, I personally don't know what she did or did not do. But the report that's interesting, uh, Fusion GPS, thank you. So she is. Well, she worked for Fusion GPS who was behind the collecting the Russian dossier information. And it turns out that she recently applied for a ham radio license. Uh, why? <laughs> now, this is one of those things that could easily not mean what you think it means. So the people who are anti uh, anti or I guess anti-FBI, at least in terms of how they've treated this president, or members of it have treated this president, not all of them, of course. But uh, people are saying, why does somebody of that age and a woman get a ham radio operator license suddenly? Because she has a smartphone, she has access to the internet, and people are saying, well, the the only possible reason is that she's using the ham radio to communicate with her handlers in Russia or something like that. And other people say, well, that could be ham radio is probably monitored by the NSA or whoever just as much as the internet. So how does that really help her? And then other people who know more than I do say, well, but you can transmit digitally over ham radio now, so there might be some kind of different technology that she's using that may or may not be detectable. I don't know. I don't know anything about ham radios, but it's an interesting question. Now, if you said to yourself, there's no reason to have a ham radio except to communicate with Russia, you might be right. But this is uh, one of those things that you should be careful about. Because just because you can't think of another reason to do it, that doesn't mean there's not another reason to do it. The, the mere fact that we don't know why anybody would do such a thing, it's sort of out of type, out of character, doesn't mean it wasn't an innocent reason. It's just that we can't think of one. Uh, it definitely raises an eyebrow. My eyebrow went up when I saw it. Um, Oh, did you, did you hear the news this morning that Omarosa recorded her own firing with, from Kelly? And I'm thinking, well, that's got to be illegal. Pretty sure that's illegal, right? 
Can you go to jail for that? Recording somebody without their permission is bad. Recording somebody in the White House without their permission on official business. If there's not a law against that, maybe we ought to have one. Maybe if that's not illegal, it should be. Um, Use it as a carrier wave. Somebody's talking about the ham radio. I don't know. Could be. So let's talk about uh, the protesters. Would you call them that? The people marching in Charlottesville today and last night. Mostly last night. They purport to be anti-racist. But why are they almost entirely white? It's the whitest bunch of people I've ever seen. Marching against racism. And I'm thinking to myself, if you're marching against racism and you can't get more than 5% ethnic diversity in your group, are you really marching against racism? Because that's not a good look. But here's the funny part. Funny, terrible. So it's terrible and funny at the same time. And uh, I'm here to tell you that those two things can live together, terrible and funny. The terrible part is that they were chanting that all police are racists. I mean, I'll just let that hang there for a moment. They were chanting a bunch of white people, 95% white, it looked like, based on the video. 95% white people were chanting that the police were racists. Now, I'm no expert on the police in Charlottesville, but I'll bet they're not all white. In fact, I would assume that they have a pretty substantial amount of non-white police officers who are there listening to a bunch of white people tell them they're racists. Now, what made me perk up when I heard that was not that it was ridiculous because the world is full of ridiculous things. But the question I ask myself is, who is it that starts the chant? Is it whoever was smart enough to show up with a bullhorn? In other words, if I were to just show up, you know, not being a member of Antifa, if I were to just show up with a bullhorn and I just sort of slid into the group and I started starting a chant on the bullhorn, could I get everybody else to chant whatever I wanted them to chant? I think you know where I'm going with this, don't you? <laughs> I think you could. I feel like you could get them to chant anything you wanted. And so I offer you this challenge. There's no money for this. All you get is attention and accolades. The next time there's a major televised Antifa gathering, the challenge is to see if you can slide in with the group, pretend to be one of them, which isn't hard. Apparently you can wear a, wear a, a mask. Bring with you either a, mic, you know, a uh, megaphone or, or not. You, know, you don't need to. But see if you can get them to chant that they are racists. So here's the, here's the, the challenge. See if you can get Antifa while they're marching to chant that they themselves are racists. Now, you might need to get it to rhyme somehow, but something like, we're all racists, or, you know, shame on us. Maybe something like that. Shame on us. So, I want to see if you can make this happen. So, it might take more than one of you. You know, you, you might go as a group and split up so it doesn't look so obvious. Then have one of you start the, ch the, uh, the chant. Um, and just see if you can blame, they can blame themselves for being racist and see how many people will chant it. Because if you make it a little bit ambiguous, so this will be the key. If you just said something that's a little bit too on the nose, then people aren't going to pick it up. So you want to have a chant that's a little bit ambiguous and see if you can get people to chant it. Because whoever got them to chant anti, whoever got, 
I guess they're Antifa. Whoever got them to chant um, that police are racists, I don't think that was a part of the group necessarily. Do you? And I, I tweeted that, you know, one way to know that Russia organized your uh, protest is if you're chanting that the police are racist. That would be a good way to know that Russia organized your protest. Because I just can't see any real legitimate American citizen, no matter what their feeling is about the country, saying, you know, we don't like the uh, KKK, but they didn't show up this year. So we've got to chant about something. What are we going to chant about? We need a chant. You know, what, what's the point of having a scary looking protest if you don't have a chant? So they're probably saying, does anybody have an idea? Anybody have a chant? And then somebody comes on and says, I got an idea. Hey, hey, I've got an idea. Does anybody else have an idea what to chant? Because I have an idea. How about we'll chant that the police, who are approximately 50% multi-ethnic or 50% non-white, whatever, are, let's chant that they're racist. Because I think that will go over well. Could make us very popular in the country. I think if we chant against the, the police who are trying to protect us, literally, that we can make some progress to make the world a better place. And the next thing you know, they're chanting against the police. Now, I saw the, uh, um, it looked like uh, there was some contingent from Black Lives Matter there holding an anti-police sign. And call, I think they were calling the police racist too. And I thought to myself, well, that's not a good look. Uh, now, at the same time, and I don't know how much press, if any, he will get, but there's the agape Agape, uh, March. Agape means unconditional love. Being led by Hog Newsom. They're somewhere in Washington, D.C. today. And I believe they are the peaceful love first protest. We'll see if they can get it right. But if the love protest is chanting against the police, I'm going to say that's not really the best look but there's no reason to believe that they will. Um, uh, so we're in a weird, weird place. You probably saw the Business Insider article that criticized President Trump's tweet for saying that he, he uh, condemns all racism. Now, wouldn't you say to yourself, hey, condemning all racism, that's as good as you can get because you want to condemn it anywhere you find it. 100% condemning of racism. And somebody criticized him for not calling out the uh, white supremacists specifically. But here's the problem. If you start calling out groups specifically, how do you not call out Black Lives Matter? I mean, if you're going to be honest about it, you know, there's certainly a lot of racism in the Black Lives Matter group, even though not all Black Lives Matter are racist, of course. But if you're going to call it out by name in every group you see it, it's, a, it's hard to know where to draw the line. So the safest, smartest, universally good thing would be to say that uh, all racism is bad. But people didn't like that. Uh, and they thought that maybe you should slice that a little finer. And I think that, you know, it, people are saying that it's a, you know, things are bad and life is falling apart. The world is coming to an end. But I hate to be the optimist. You know, I, I feel like I'm the last optimist left in the world. But if you have... 
white people marching against racism and black people marching against racism and you've got the President of the United States speaking out against racism. You've got the entire Republican Party, let's say 98% of them, speaking out against racism. You've got the entire left speaking out against racism. And the best racist that you can find to put on CNN, I talked about this in my last podcast, podcast was this one guy who has a Nazi on his shed in somewhere in rural Pennsylvania. And that he was like, well, we, we can't even really find a, a proper racist anymore. We're going to have to look pretty hard. We found this one guy who's got a shed. He's got a swastika on the shed. I think we can talk to this guy. That's it. I mean, if you live in a world where everybody is protesting against everybody else for being a racist, that's pretty close to a good situation, Right? A bad situation would be some people are racist, some people are protesting against them. It's something like an even fight. There's nothing like that going on. There's this ever-shrinking group of actual racists that are materially irrelevant, but they get a lot of attention. So I think we're, at least the country is heading in the right direction if everybody is they're arguing with each other and they can't take yes for an answer. You know, hey, President Trump, why don't you speak out against racism? Okay, I condemn all racists and all racism. You didn't do it right. If that's what we're arguing about, you know, whether or not you said it right, then that's pretty good. You may have noticed that um, U2 has released some of their songs remixed. And they're calling their, uh, or I think the one, their biggest hit in the new stuff is called The Summer of Love. What are the odds that you too would uh, would have a a hit song called The Summer of Love exactly during what I told you was going to be? The Summer of Love. And the protests, the Charlottesville protests, um... (laughs) <laughs> the Charlottesville protests are probably more good news than bad in the sense that we should be protesting against racism. The president should be talking out against it. Uh, you saw Ivanka also tweeted against it. She was a little more specific, calling out the um, white supremacists and the uh, KKK, neo-Nazis, I guess, specifically. So she was a little more granular. That's good, too. Why can't anybody take yes for an answer? Um, they trashed her on Twitter, yeah. Now, as far as Omarosa, um, the media is making a big deal about the fact that she's making claims about the president. Does she have any credibility at all? You know, if if Omarosa is your best source, things are not going your way. If you're a critic of the president, you know, think about some of the criticisms of the president recently. And just ask yourself if the quality of the criticism has changed. Now, let me take you back in the Wayback Machine to 2016. What were the criticisms? The criticisms were President Trump will destroy the economy. That's a pretty big deal. He's going to uh, let Russia run the world. Um, He's going to cause a nuclear war. Those were the types of problems. He's He's going to round people up and put them in trains to concentration camps. Those were the level of problems. Here's what we're criticizing the president about now. Think about the size of the problems. They're criticizing him because his tweet against racism wasn't worded the way they would have done it. They're criticizing um, Donald Trump Jr. I know you're watching my cat behind me right now. You're, they're criticizing Don Jr. for attending a meeting to get some information that didn't actually happen. 
That's two levels away from a crime. The first level away is that it's completely legal to accept information, especially if nobody is telling you it came from a secret source. And nobody was saying that. Nobody alleged in that meeting that there was going to be secret information that came from the Kremlin. That wasn't mentioned. It was just information about the Hillary. And, and there's no law against that. So the meeting, there was, there was no law against it. And even if they had received the information, there would have been no law against it. But it didn't happen. No information came. That's two levels away from a crime. That's the best they have right now. So the best thing that the opponents have is something that's so legal, so completely legal, it's two full levels away from a crime. There are very few things that are two levels away from a crime. Let me give you another example. If I were to crumple up this piece of paper and throw it on my own floor in my own house, that is, first of all, not a crime. And second of all, I didn't do it. I'm two levels away from a crime. All right. Then what, what else are they criticizing the president for? Um, they've criti- they're criticizing the president because the economy is screaming, uh, employment is great, but wages, wages have not gone up as much as people had hoped. But what is it that makes wages go up? Well, you have to spend some time with full employment and a good economy, and then it kind of has to happen. It would be hard for it not to happen unless the robots come pretty quickly. So, yeah. So they're worried about that, but that's heading in the right direction. They're worried that Kim Jong-un might not be keeping his word, but everything seems to be fairly heading in the right direction. It's just going to take a while if that's your biggest problem. Then there's Iran, which apparently is on the the verge of self-destruction, well, with a little help from the United States um, putting the squeeze on its economy. But it doesn't look like it's going to require any kind of a military action because Iran looks like it's going to solve itself. President Trump seems to have turned Iran into a self-solving problem. I don't know if we've ever seen that before. Um, Self-solving in the sense that the, uh, the Iranian public wants change. They have the ability to change. They just need to you know, get enough people excited enough and pretty close to that. At the same time, the economy is making it somewhat inevitable. So Iran can't really stay in its current situation. So if you start looking at all the things that the president is being criticized for, they went from he's going to destroy the world, destroy the economy, to, well, there was that time somebody in his family took a meeting in which nothing happened, and if it had happened, it wouldn't have been a crime, and it was smart to take the, mo- the meeting, to there, there are people who did things unrelated to the, um, to the campaign that got in trouble with taxes, but, but that's it. That's what you have. Um, All right, I'm just looking at your comments. Um, So it seems to me, I've been watching the comments uh, certainly around Charlottesville and the president's tweet about it and and stuff. And I'm still seeing a lot of people, Mia Mia Farrow, I responded to her this morning. Um, So Mia Farrow is one of the people who have been taken in by the fake news. And the biggest thing that a lot of people were taken in by is the when the president said that there were good people on both sides. Now, of course, the the illegitimate press reported that as, wait, he's saying that uh, Nazis are good people? But, of course, nothing like that happened. 
the president was saying there were both good people on both sides of the question of whether to keep the Confederate statues or not. Now, I'm against Confederate statues. I think it's a terrible idea. They're just decorations that are offensive to a lot of people. So why would you have a decoration that's offensive? That's like the worst kind of decoration is one that offends 30% of the public or however many are offended. It doesn't, it doesn't qualify as a decoration. If it's offending people, you're supposed to be pleasing with your decorations. So I, uh, to me, that's an easy choice. But um, Mia Farrow has been taken in by the illegitimate press to believe that he was actually praising the Nazis, when in fact, I saw, I saw an estimate that the president has um, disavowed racism in public 55 times. 55 times he said it in public. <laughs> Have you disavowed anything 55 times? I don't think I've even said anything 55 times. Um, <laughs> All right. Were you, were you sent by Chuck Schumer to mess with you? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, all the Sunday shows are doing the Charlottesville one year ago. How many of the how many of the uh, news folks are showing the people who were marched this year in Charlottesville uh, chanting that the police are racist? Has CNN showed that clip? That's a serious question. So I'm seeing it on Twitter, but um, are they just not covering the fact that people are calling an ethnically diverse police force racist? Oops. I think there's something happening downstairs I might have to check. All right. Um, What about the plane? Eh, The plane is boring. That story's over. Would I hire Amorosa? Certainly not. All right, um, I think uh, I think I've said as much as I can say. I've got to get back to work. Uh, you can't see my Mia Farrow tweet. Well, it was it wasn't a tweet; it was a response. So look at the tweets and the responses. You'll see it there. All right, that's enough for now, and I will talk to you later. <laughs>